Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you gave us, you have given us today, this morning to pray as a family, as a church, Lord. You have uh, given us this time to pray together, to be together here and to encourage one another through the verses, through the uh, word that you have uh, shared with us, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, gather together even if it is online. Lord, thank you for our church. Thank you for the dedication and the call that you have uh, uh, extended to each and every one of us in order for us to be able to join this uh, mission, great commission that you have entitled us to give and to do and to share as well, Lord. Help us to be a strong church no matter what challenges we face no matter what limitations are in front of us no matter what issues and problems we are facing lord help us in each families in each family lord to be strong enough for you that we love you and uplift your your your, your principles above anything else let Pioneer Church be known not because of the building, not because of how beautiful is the place, but rather with the, the fervent of our prayers, with the work that we are doing for you, with our dedication. Let Pioneer Church be known, Lord, that we are the great warriors for you and soldiers of the cross that will bring uh, victory to you onto this earth. Help us not to be too much uh, at ease and loving this life. Help us rather to be ready for that ultimate rest that you have prepared for us. I would like to pray, especially we would like to pray for Pastor Dion and his family who are sick right now and we know it. May you, Lord, uh, be glorified because you protected them up to now and may you uplift them and encourage them and boost their immune system to get them healthy as well. We would like to pray as well for Tumelo who is sick of COVID as well. Lord, may you please take care of him as he is gathering with us right now. May you be with his family and Lord, little boy as well. Protect his family. Anyone in the church as well who are not well, Lord, I pray especially as well for Sister Valle uh, Valencia, who is going to go through a, a surgery this coming Tuesday for the eyes. May you, Lord, protect her and take care of her. Be with Auntie Evadne as well and her health, Lord. We thank you for her and we thank you for everything that you have done for her, for our church. Be with each and every family who are here and not here, Lord that we feel of your presence. I pray especially for Emil as well, Lord. He has requested to be prayed, especially for the big decisions he has to take regarding his family and the decision about his job. Lord, through this time of prayer, may the, the church pray with me and uplift his family in, at hands. May you strengthen the family, Lord, be with Sister Sharon, who is far away, with 700 kilometers away from us, and with all the kids, and prepare them, take care of them for this life of ultimate rest. And be with Emil as he is going to take a decision that will change drastically his, his life. Be with myself as well as I am going to share a word, and be with each and every one of us who are here and who will be online as well, who will be receiving this message, that we will be ready for that message. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We are now going uh, to the uh, message of today. I am stopping the, the screen now, and I would like to share with you a verse that is in Psalms 54. Psalms 54 and the verse uh, 7. Uh, sorry, uh, it is not Psalms, but Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 
and the verse 17. I am going to share it on the screen just for now for you to be able to see it. I would invite two people, a lady and a, a man, to read that verse for us, please. You may unmute yourself and please read it. Uh, Isaiah 54 verse 17, I invite two people. Can I invite Peter, please, to read for us the first? And may I uh, request also Emilia to read for us the verse 17. Peter and Emilia, if you may unmute yourself and read for us Isaiah 54 and verse 17, please. Uh, I am allowing you to unmute, so sorry, Peter. Did you say, did you say Isaiah 54 verse 17? Yes, yes, my brother, yes, it is that one. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Sister Emilia, may you please unmute yourself and read for us also a second time that verse. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Emilia, for the opportunity to, to, to read. Uh, now I am going to uh, show to you uh, one aspect of this verse. Uh, I will show the verse always on the screen because it is an important verse as we study it today. But let us pray first. Our Heavenly Father, please, we are going to open your word. Make it simple and clear for us and help us to remember what we need to know today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we thank God for the opportunity that he gave us to, to be together today. And I always extend my, my, my appreciation and my, my warm welcome as you come in this Zoom meeting as we are going to study the Word of God. This uh, message here today is for your family. This message is for you. And this message is to allow you to, to have that opportunity to, to understand the ultimate uh, beauty of who is our God? Yes, our church has been closed, but do we know who is our, our God and what can he do for us? Let us see, first of all, at the end of the verse, at the bottom of this verse, it says, says the Lord, says the Lord. So God is giving this verse and he is giving the signature just right at the bottom. The Lord here is in capital letter, which means that it is a message given by Yahweh, by Jehovah himself. Jehovah or Yahweh is our creator. He is our redeemer. He is our savior. And he is the one who is promising all the things that is on top of it. And when you look at the type of this verse itself, it seems like the foundation of this verse is at the bottom, which is God himself. God is the foundation of this promise. So when God is promising you this uh, word, this passage, it means then that it is trustworthy. It means then that you can believe in God and you can trust in him. When you look at the verse, at the foundation, it is God, Yahweh, Jehovah himself. But on top of it, it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. What we learn from this one, first of all, is this. Brothers and sisters in Pioneer, there will always be weapons prepared and formed by people to hit 
and harm and kill you. God is telling you here that he will not prevent people from forming weapons. People will always form weapons to kill and harm you. However, what God is promising you here is that those weapons will be harmless. Those weapons will not prosper against you. So no matter what is happening, don't ask God to remove people from having weapons to attack you. Because there will always be people who will be attacking you in your life. But the promise of God is no matter what those people will do, they will not prosper in doing so, in trying to harm and attack you. That is the first promise that the weapons will not be able to prosper against you. The weapons will not be able to prosper against your family. The weapons will not be able to prosper against your job, against our, our very own pioneer Seventh-day Adventist Church. The weapons will not be able to prosper because God is at the foundation of our church, at the foundation of the promise, the weapons will not be able to prosper. Number two, the second promise that we can learn from this verse is, and every tongue which rises shall uh, against you in judgment, you shall condemn. The second thing that we need to learn here then that people will always talk about you. People will always talk about you. They will always gossip about you. They will always find a way to discourage you. They will always find a way to criticize you. And that is why God is telling every tongue will go against you. Even if your friends, even if your spouse, at a certain time, they can be used by the devil to attack you. But at this point, God is promising us that if he is the foundation of the verse, he is at the green path, which is at the bottom of it. If God is the foundation of our church, if God is the foundation of our family, if God is the foundation of our principles, our own, then those tongues will not be able to judge us. Instead, we will condemn them. That is a promise of God. It means then that those people, if they do not repent, then at the end, we will end judging them during the 1000 years. And that is why it is better for us to, to be silent because there will be time during the 1000 years that God will allow us to talk. And during the 1,000 years of the millennium in heaven, we will be counter-checking the judgment of God. So every tongue who is not repenting will end up being condemned at that time. Today, God is promising you that every tongue, anyone who is against you, speaking against you, will not be able to prosper if you have God as a foundation. Now, every promise of God in the Bible has always conditions with it. Every promises, every promise of God in the Bible is always attached with a condition. And that is why you deceive yourself if you just listen to the promise and you dis disregard or you neglect the the. the what we say conditions so when there is a promise look for the conditions and you will understand it so here is what it says the first condition is this this is the heritage of the servants of the lord so the condition that is given up to us here is the servant of the lord are you a servant of the lord are you a servant of the Lord? 
If you are a servant of the Lord, then the weapons will not be prospering against you, and all the tongues speaking against you will be speaking in vain, because you are a servant of the Lord. How do you know that you are a servant of the Lord? The way you know that you are a servant of the Lord is because a servant has a service. The root of servant is service. Do you have a service in your life? And the service is a service when you have a master. Is God your master? If God is your master, then he is, you are his servant. So you need to understand then in this aspect that servant means there is a service. Service means that there is a master. And the master means that there is a mission that that master is giving you to do, to accomplish. Do you do that mission as an individual? Do you do that mission as a family? Do you do that mission as a church? Do we do it? Or are, you, are we just going into church? Because we seek that we need to go into church and we just come there to gather and eat and we leave and come back into our house as if as if nothing happened to us. But today God is reminding you that if you have God as your foundation, then it means you are a servant. And the servant means that you have a service. And the service means that you have a master. And the master means that you have a mission. Do you know the mission that you have in your life? I would like to once in this time to go into 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and the verse 9 to know what is my mission? What is your mission? It says on the verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The mission that is inside of these verses, first of all, the servants are chosen. So you don't choose your master, it is the master who is choosing you. The servant are priesthood and royal, which means that it is the king himself that appointed them in that position of servants. The servants as well are holy in a nation, which means that they abide with God's principle, with, by, with the heavenly uh, foundation of its own. And the servants are special people, which means here that the, the main reason of a servant is to proclaim. And when we talk about proclaim, it is talking about your mouth. If you are silent, then you are not a servant. If you are silent, then you are not a servant because a servant has to proclaim. If you are, if it happened that you cannot speak, then you can use your hands. You can use your life to show to people and talk to people about the God who took you from darkness into the light. Most of people who are coming into church, they always tend to talk about darkness. They always tend to have that problem of, uh, you know, I have this problem, I have this problem, I have this problem. And we tend to brag about Satan, that Satan is faithful. You know, the devil did this to me, the devil did that to me. And we forget that we are called to talk about the light and not about the darkness. Let me repeat it again. We are called as a servant to talk about the light and not about the darkness. So please stop talking about the devil from today. Talk about your Jesus. Talk about the lamb who died for you. Talk about the lamb who gave his life for you. Start talking about the light. Stop talking about the darkness. That makes you a servant. 
and back to where we started again in this lesson here we have God as our foundation and the foundation is giving us a promise that the weapons will not uh, will fail that the tongues will fail and the condition that is given unto us is we need to be a servant a servant as a service a service as a master who is God a master uh, is giving you a mission so you as a servant need to know your mission and the mission is to proclaim the one who called you from darkness into light that is the first condition the second condition is here this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord the second condition is heritage you cannot inherit from a person unless that person recognized you as his son or his daughter so heritage means that you have been adopted by God and chosen as a daughter and his sons which means then that to be uh, to have those uh, messages those promises given unto you accomplished in your life you need to choose God as your father be him as a, as a master is is good but you need to have a closer relationship with your God as a father so if God is your father then you are his, uh, his daughters or his, uh, his sons today let me tell you Kantu is for his soul and I have never heard Kantu asking me daddy what we will be eating tomorrow or what we will be wearing tomorrow because Kant knows that because I am her daddy then I will be taking care of all them all her needs she will not have to think about it she will not even uh, need to to ask about it so today I am calling upon your family today to invite your family to choose God as your father if God is your father, then he will provide the food for you as Matthew 6, 33 is telling you. If God is your father, you shall not ask God what we shall eat, what we shall wear, what we shall drink, because God is your father. So the second condition is choose God and accept God as your father. Let me repeat it again. God is the foundation of this verse. God, Yahweh and Jehovah. And he is promising you that people will always use weapons to attack and harm you. But they will fail. People will always talk about you and gossip about your name. But they will fail because you have God as the foundation. And the conditions Acquire, required for you to get God as your foundation is number one you choose him as your uh, master you are the servant and the servant as a service the service as a master and the master is appointing unto you a mission that you need to accomplish the second condition is that you will receive an inheritance or an heritage. The heritage is only acquired when you choose God as your father. And the father means that you need to change your relationship between God and you from a master only, from a God only, to become a relationship between a father and a son, a father and a daughter. Which means that from now on, all the anxieties that you have, all the issues you think about, you need to transfer them from you to your Father in heaven. And the third one, the third condition is this. And their righteousness is from me. And their righteousness is from me. Which is telling us today that no matter what you do, you will never be able to be right in front of people no matter what you do you will never be able to be right in front of people people will always think and criticize about you about what you did 
even if and you remember the story of the donkey and the old man and the young man no matter what they did people will always have something to talk to tell and to say about you but today god himself promised to you that the righteousness is from me thy righteousness is from me so if you fail to be right in front of people accept god as your righteousness and he will cleanse you and that is why in first john in first john chapter 2 chapter 1 and the verse 9 it is telling us a promise here if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and god is good he is not only cleansing you cleaning you because the problem is you can be clean and your 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 your, your clothes are still dirty but when God is cleaning you, he is not only cleaning you, he is giving you a new clothing. And that clothing is from Jesus himself. That clothing is Jesus himself. And that is why when God is looking at you, he is no longer seeing you. He is from now on seeing Jesus, his son, who is the right of God. That is why in the verse chapter 2, verse 1, it says, my little children these things i write to you so that you may not sin so that should lead you not to sin anymore because you know that god is giving you his righteousness but if anyone has sinned we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous so not only God is giving you his righteousness, but he is giving you an advocate that cleans, clean you as well whenever you fell down into sin. And the book of Proverbs says the, the, the right is falling seven times, but he is or she is always standing up. So the way that you know that you are a right person is when you are still standing the problem with the wrong of the wicked people is this they do not need to rise anymore because they are falling on the ground but when you feel that you still have that ability to stand then stand up for god the problem with the wicked is they cannot fall and if you would like not to be to fall then just be like the wicked but that is the wrong ad advice the reason the, 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 the wicked cannot fall is because they are already on the ground. How can you fall when you are on the ground? But you, when you stand up, when you, you walk for, on, the, on behalf of God, you can still fall. But do not remain falling. Stand up. Ask God to choose you. Ask God to help you, give you the strength to stand and then you will stand up until the end and God will give you his righteousness. So today, let me repeat you again and end with this. The Lord is our foundation. Jehovah is our foundation. It is the foundation of this promise and our mission on its own. And the foundation of the mission is coming with a promise. The promise is number one no weapon people will always use weapons to be to to fight against you and to harm you but they will not prosper if god is your foundation people will always talk about you gossip about you and try to damage your reputation but god is your foundation they will fail but three conditions are required for you to have god as your foundation number one you need to be a servant a servant as a master who is god and the servant as a mission given by the master and the servant as a service do you do the service that is required for you as a church are you faithful in that service that god has given you 
are we a seventh day adventist faithful in the real of uh, the community in the place where we are called to live together that is the first question are we a servant number two question is are we choosing god as our father are we the children of god because when we have god as our father then we were his children and the children will receive an heritage a uh, heritage and it means that no matter what pro kind of problem we face god will give you and provide everything for you god will provide and the third one is righteousness not only god is giving us a mission as a servant but god is also giving us all the resources as heritage the mission is the servant and the the resources is given for the children of god but in the middle as we work god is giving us a righteousness which means that we will be kept clean no matter what people will do we will be kept clean no matter what people use to fight against us so my call for you today is to choose God as your master. Choose God as your father. Choose God as your advocate. And then at the end, he will become your foundation. Amen. Um, may I please invite Elder Mwansa to unmute himself if he can pray for us as well? Is it possible for you, Elder, to unmute yourself and pray for us? Okay. Our loving Father in heaven, we thank you this Sabbath day. We thank you for the wonderful programs that you prepared for us through the theory. We thank you for the blessings, Heavenly Father, through all the messages. We uplift your holy name because you are God. And we want to thank you for the foundation that you've laid in our lives and that lord no weapon of evil that will be targeted on us because we believe and we anchor our faith in you and that lord continue to keep us safe and dress us with a robe of righteousness that is jesus christ our lord as we live in this world we pray and commit our lives to your mission. We pray and commit our lives that Lord, soon and very soon, Jesus is coming. And we, when he comes, we pray and we believe with faith that our names shall be called up yonder on that row when Jesus will call his people. With our children, with our uncles, with our brothers and sisters and all that are faithful dear lord may their names be written in the book of life thank you lord till we meet again in the same manner if we do not meet with our brothers and sisters between now and then we pray that lord if it is your will may we be saved into the kingdom it's our prayer in the name of jesus christ Amen.